Assembly, Secretary General of the United Nations, Director General of the United Nations Office at Geneva, High Commissioner, Excellencies, Distinguished Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is a privilege and a great honour for me to open the 46th session of the Human Rights Council. The first regular session of the year is in many ways the main session of this Council, which in its turn is the most important forum of the United Nations Human Rights Pillar. And this 46th session is particularly special as the first almost entirely virtual regular session of the Council. By continuing to meet at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic shows no signs of abating, the Human Rights Council fulfills the collective responsibility to continue upholding human rights standards and to respond to the human rights challenges exacerbated by times of crisis. We will begin the session by listening to statements by the President of the 75th Session of the General Assembly, His Excellency Mr. Volkan Bozkir, the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, Ms. Michelle Bachelet, and the Federal Councillor and Head of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs of Switzerland, His Excellency Mr. Ignazio Cassis, representing the host country. I wish to take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to all delegations and other stakeholders who are participating in this session of the Council. Due to the prevailing sanitary conditions and the extraordinary modalities for this session, the 15 LDC's SIDS selected beneficiary delegates, supported by the LDC's SIDS Trust Fund, are not able to participate in this session in person. However, two virtual induction sessions on the Council's work were organized with simultaneous interpretation on the 15th and 16th of February to ensure that they receive timely information to engage with the Council ahead of this session. Over 65 government officials, mostly capital-based, from 26 LDC SIDS, including four without a permanent mission in Geneva, attended the induction sessions. We are looking forward to their active virtual participation during this 46th session. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, before I give the floor to today's high-level speakers, let us turn our attention to the proposed extraordinary modalities for this session. As announced at the organizational meeting on 8th February, the Bureau has recommended that the extraordinary modalities for participation in the 46th session would be similar to those applied during the 36th and 37th sessions of the UPR Working Group. The minutes of the Bureau meeting of 18th February provided detailed information about the proposed extraordinary modalities to be applied at the 46th session. Allow me to recall the proposed extraordinary modalities for the 46th session as detailed in the annex of the minutes of the Bureau meeting of the 18th of February for consideration by the Council. The number of delegates in the Assembly Hall would be managed in order not to exceed the limit of five delegates being present at the same time. The high-level segment of the 46th session would take place virtually, whereby the statements of dignitaries would be delivered by pre-recorded video statements in a similar manner to the high-level segment of the 75th session of the General Assembly. State delegations would be strongly encouraged to send pre-recorded video statements. In the case of interactive dialogues and panel discussions, or when pre-recorded video statements would not be technically possible or could not be submitted within the set deadline, states could alternatively deliver their statements through live link via the Zoom platform. Only those state delegations who are unable to pre-record video messages or participate via Zoom could exceptionally deliver their statements from the Assembly Hall, while also respecting the five-person limit and in consultation with the HRC Secretariat. 
delegations would be able to raise points of order without being in the room by raising their hands in Zoom, which will be recognized by the Secretariat at the podium. The Chair would then stop the debate and give the floor through the Zoom platform to the delegation that has raised the point of order. Delegations would be able to exercise their rights of reply remotely in the same manner as during the 45th regular session. The Secretariat would register the request and inform the representative of the estimated time for the right of reply segment. The representative will then be called upon during the right of reply segment in the order of the requests received. Side events cannot take place inside the Palais des Nations during the 46th session. If NGOs decide to organize virtual events in parallel to the 46th session, information on such events could be listed on the OHCHR Civil Society webpage, along with a statement indicating that the events are not council events and are the sole responsibility of their organizers. Delegations would be invited to organize their informal consultations and group meetings virtually. Delegations needing assistance in setting up virtual informal consultations and group meetings would be invited to contact the relevant focal point within the Council Secretariat. Information on the informal meetings would be included on SCED, including the name of a focal point from one of the main sponsors. The same health and safety measures that were applied during the 45th regular session of the Human Rights Council and the 36th and 37th sessions of the UPR Working Group would continue to be applied in a very strict manner. Additionally, I am also proposing that the Council adopt a decision according to which, given the current exceptional circumstances related to COVID-19, NGOs in consultative status with ECOSOC and national human rights institutions with A status would be invited to submit pre-recorded video statements for general debates, as well as for interactive dialogues, panel discussions, and UPR adoptions during the 46th session, during the period when COVID-19 restrictions prohibit public meetings of more than five participants. In order to balance the importance of inclusivity and what is feasible in terms of time and resources, the list of speakers for NGOs for each of the general debates would be set in line with the average number of NGOs that participated in each of the general debates in the previous three March sessions of the Council. Moreover, NGOs would be provided the opportunity to indicate their priority when making their registration in order to ensure placement in their preferred general debates. Should the modalities be adopted, this would be referred to as a decision in the report of the session. These extraordinary modalities would apply exclusively to the 46th regular session, during the period when COVID-19 restrictions prohibit public meetings of more than five participants and should not serve as a precedent. Concerning the voting process, I understand that this is of great concern to delegations in light of the current situation. Please be assured that the Bureau remains seized of this issue. As you would have seen in the minutes of the Bureau meeting of 18th February, the Secretariat is exploring and testing several options for virtual voting for the 46th session in the event that the current limitations on in-person participation continue through to the 23rd of March. The most suitable options will be presented to the Bureau in the coming days and will thereafter be presented to the Council members for their consideration. I assure you that delegations will be consulted and that no decisions will be taken in this regard without the agreement of this Council. On a final note, as you know, I have held extensive consultations over the past two weeks with all regional and other groups, as well as with civil society. 
during these consultations, a common and recurring concern was expressed by delegations in relation to the lack of real-time interpretation in all six languages on the Zoom platform. Subsequent to these consultations, I sent a letter on behalf of the Bureau to the Acting Assistant Secretary General for Information and Communications Technology to request that the United Nations Secretariat allow the Council to use the Zoom platform with the possibility to channel interpretation in all six languages as soon as possible. I am extremely pleased to announce that last Friday night I received a response from the Assistant Secretary General in which he approved our request and exceptionally authorized the use of the Zoom platform to support specifically the Council's 46th session. Indeed, this would mean that all participants and delegations would have access to real-time interpretation in all six languages in the Zoom platform. We are extremely pleased with this development and we will continue our engagement with the respective UNOG officers to ensure that we are able to implement the Zoom platform with interpretation in all six languages as soon as practically possible. I continue to ask for your patience and understanding and your continued support for the upcoming session. Are there any delegations wishing to take the floor on the proposed modalities for the 46th session? I see none. Can I take it then that the Council agrees with the proposed modalities? I see no objection. It is so decided. I now move to reprisals. The active participation of representatives of civil society and national human rights institutions in the work of the Human Rights Council is essential to the fulfillment of its mandate. As President of this Council, I can assure you that I will follow up on all allegations brought to my attention of acts of reprisal and intimidation committed against persons in connection to their contribution to the work of the Human Rights Council, its mechanisms and procedures. I call on everyone to take all necessary measures to prevent such acts in the first place and to ensure that they are promptly and seriously addressed in case they were to happen.